Now let's turn our attention to altering the brightness, the contrast and the colour of the photos that we're going to include in our family history project. So take this image here, which we have sitting inside the organiser workspace. We now have a fixed pane that's on the right hand side of the main workspace and under that fixed pane we have a range of different options that will provide us with the ability to enhance our images. Start off with the Auto Smart Fix and by clicking on that it will apply a range of different adjustments to our image. Now keep in mind that this is done automatically and some of the adjustments might be a little bit too much for you or too much for the image itself. If, and you'll notice that when we actually apply something like Auto Smart Fix, that what it does is it creates a second image for us inside the organizer workspace. So now we have a before, this was the original image, and this is the after image, that is after the Auto Smart Fix adjustment has been applied. It's placed into a version set. When that version set is closed, we just see the adjusted photo. If we want to restore the original image, then we right click on that original image, go down to version set, and then just select revert to original from the pop-out menu. Click OK and we'll go back to the original photo. We can then select another option so we can choose auto levels if we want to apply auto levels. Again it creates a version set for us and if this doesn't give us the correct adjustment or one that looks good or well then we can do the same thing go back to the original. The one I think that works particularly well with this image is Auto Contrast. Auto Levels does a little bit of colour change as well, and Auto Contrast just adjusts the contrast, whereas Auto Smart Fix actually changes some sharpness as well. So here I'm going to select Auto Contrast, and you'll see the image there is not looking as flat or lacking in contrast as it did before. Let's jump across to the Editor Workspace now and look at some of the more manual controls that we have. You can see a great family photo here and let's look at a couple of the ways that we can adjust the contrast and brightness in this image. All of our key adjustment features are listed under the Enhance menu and in particular under Adjust Lighting. You can see some auto adjustments at the top here. That's like applying the similarly named feature that we just saw in the fixed pane. Or if we go down to Adjust Lighting, you'll see that we've got some specific controls here as well. Let's look at brightness and contrast first. So here we've got two slider controls. One adjusts the brightness and you've got to be careful that you don't start to lose detail in your highlight areas when you're pushing the brightness up. And the other one adjusts contrast so it makes it more black and white or more grey when you pull it down the other way. One of the problems with working with this particular tool is that we don't have a lot of ability to see if we're making some of the lighter pixels too white and some of the darker pixels too black. So I'm going to cancel out of that, go up to Enhance again, down to Adjust Lighting, and look at the Shadow Highlights. Now Shadow Highlights Control separates a slider control for the shadows, so we can lighten the shadows or darken the shadows using this slider control, and for the highlights as well, so we can darken in the highlights if we just want to target that. And once we've made those two adjustments, we can then come back and work just on the middle values or the mid-tone values of the image and adjust the contrast of those particular mid-tone values. So we're getting a lot more control over the different parts of the image using the shadow highlights control. I'm going to cancel out of that. We'll go back in to the enhance menu and then down to adjust lighting again and this time across to levels. And levels is the same in Photoshop Elements and Photoshop itself. It's more of a professional control and it has a graph here that shows you all the pixels in the image. On the left hand side it's the dark pixels, on the right hand side it's the light pixels. And this is really handy because you can see that the darkest pixel in the image, which is represented just here, is not black. This is where black is in our histogram. And on the right hand side you can see the lightest pixel in the image is not white. This is where white is. So we can grab these two little controllers here and drag them in in order to make this part of the image black and to make this part of the image or these pixels white. But if we do that too much we'll convert some of the delicate detail in the shadows and the delicate detail in the highlights to just pure white and pure black. So before we do that, I'm just going to drag them back out again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just drag in that control 
in the shadow area. And you'll notice as I drag it in that the preview changes. First of all, it changes to pure white. And then as I gradually bring it in towards the graph and the pixels in the graph, you'll need to notice that some of those pixels start to be shown in the image. This means they're being clipped or converted to just pure black. So what you want to do is bring it in until you start to see a few pixels and then just back it off a bit until they disappear. That way we're not converting any of the delicate detail in the shadows to pure black. Same thing with the white highlights. You notice that it turns black when I hold down the Alt or Opt key. And as I drag in this particular control now, as I bring it towards these pixels, you'll start to see some of those pixels being highlighted in the image. This means these pixels are actually being converted to pure white. So let's just back off that adjustment until we see no pixels highlighted in the preview. And then just let go of the, the control at that point and we can adjust the middle values. So here we can make the middle values brighter by moving to the left or darker by moving to the right. So we get that just right and click OK and that will then be applied to this image. So levels is a great way of getting a little bit more control and being able to predict what's happening to those shadows and those highlights areas in our image. Let's swap images now and we'll go to this color photo that was scanned and it's a photo of some lavender and we'll look at a couple of ways that we can adjust the color in the image. First of all we'll go up to enhance and then you'll notice that we've got a bunch of auto options at the top here, including one called auto color correction. So we'll just select that and you'll see that immediately the background has lost some of that green tinge that it had and the actual lavender itself is a lot more purple and brighter as well. So that's a pretty good job at correcting the color in there. And if you've got a strange color cast in your image, then this is a great way to start. If it doesn't give you exactly the results that you want, remember we can always go back to edit and then undo auto color correction, go back to the enhance menu, down to adjust color and here is where we have some manual controls. We'll start with remove color cast and this will work particularly well with this image because we have an eyedropper here where we can set the color in the image by just clicking on a part of the image that's meant to be neutral. Luckily we, when we scanned this we actually scanned it on a white background and you can see by just clicking on it that background is now neutral and the color is actually much better with just a simple adjustment like that. We also have the ability then if we go to enhance and down to adjust color to alter the hue and saturation. In particular for this image I would just concentrate on the saturation and you can increase the purple in the lavender by simply dragging up the saturation but you want to be a little bit careful because you don't want it to look too unrealistic so just be careful how you work with the saturation control here. I'm going to click cancel out of there and go, let's go and have a look at a couple of the other options. I'll undo the adjustment made by the remove color cast so we go back to the original image as well. Let's go down to adjust color again and we'll look at color variations right at the very bottom of the menu. And you can see we have a before and after image here. Then we have the ability to select specific parts of the image that we're going to change the color. Let's start with the midtones and then we move to step two where we adjust the intensity of the color changes. I'm just going to push that up so that you can see change in the thumbnails represented here. By dragging up the amount slider, you'll see how strong the changes will be if I apply them. So I'm just going to drag it back down again now. Now it's a little bit green in here, so we want to perhaps decrease some of the green. Again, these thumbnails might be a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to drop down the adjustment a little bit and click on the decrease green option. So now there's a difference between what's on the left and what's on the right. I'll click it once more. You'll see it's starting to go a little bit magenta now. So I'll just increase the green to reverse that adjustment that I've made. So you notice that we've got increase red, increase green, increase blue, and then at the bottom decrease blue, decrease green, and decrease red. So we're looking at opposite adjustments, top and bottom. We can also lighten and darken the image here as well. Once we're happy with our adjustment, we just click OK to apply that adjustment to the photo itself. The next feature we want to look at, again, under the Enhance and then Adjust Color menu, is called Adjust Color Curves. 
and this gives us the chance to select a style of adjustment and even though it's called adjust color curves it's predominantly the ability to change the way in which the tones are being represented so we can choose a style that increases the contrast or increases the midtones and we can then use the slider controls to actually modify that preset that we've selected on the left hand side there. So think of it more as a tonal correction or a brightness and contrast correction rather than a color correction even though it's sitting underneath the color options. And the final one that we want to look at again back to enhance and down to adjust color is the one called adjust color for skin tone. Now there's no skin tones in this image here but it's worth just having it a bit of a look to see how it works. It works by selecting the skin tone in an image. Now there's no skin tone in this image so I'm just going to select the yellow hay there and then you'll see that we can apply a change to the tan and to the blush of the image using these controls and also to the overall color temperature. So suited for portraits more so than a scan of an object like this but another way of changing color and worth remembering when you're playing with your images and you're changing the colors in them.